When I was a little kid, I was adopted. My birth mother was white from England, and my birth father was black. He was in the Navy. Biracial couples back then, in the 60s, not looked upon very well. She had to give me up because she was afraid her family wouldn't accept me. My, uh, my father, my birth father, never showed up. I was very lucky, very lucky, and I was adopted as a little baby by a couple. Uh, my, my mother, the woman who raised me, my adopted mother, but I call my mother, she actually was from Germany. She came out of uh, Bad Homburg. Her and another man, whose last name was Sharp, who was my last name, Sharp, uh, adopted me. They were together for two years, and then they divorced. My mother found another man who I say raised me, and he was my actual father, even though he was the, the third man in my life. He was actually my father. He raised me. He died when I was 11. He died of cancer. Two very slow years of death that I watched. Never forgot that. Still in my head. I can't forget that. It was so bad when I watched him die. <clears throat> that the day itself was a race for my memory. And I mean this in a very odd way. People would ask me, when did your father die? And I couldn't remember. I didn't know. And it wasn't that I was trying to hide it. I could actually look at his, I could look at his gravesite and see the date and then forget a minute later and not remember. It took me about 10 years before I could remember that date. It was March 18th. So I remember after that time, my mother had no family because her family was in Germany and they'd kind of just about disowned her for packing up and moving to the States. She came when she was very young, 18, 19. So it was just me and her. My mother couldn't handle it. She really had a, a trouble when my father died just like I did. And I just wanted to escape. So I had to become an older teen as fast as I could. I ran off to the Marine Corps when I was 17 years old, happy to just get out of the house and try to be a man. I was searching, I know now, for positive male role models I didn't have in my life. I wasn't going anyplace. I barely graduated high school. It was not a good spot at all. My mother couldn't handle that at all. She collapsed. My mother started with first prescription drugs and then went to illegal drugs and eventually was arrested, lost everything, and was a convicted felon. I came back from the Marine Corps and I helped her. I helped her build back up. I took the money that I had that I'd saved and we got her back up and started and I saw how hard it was for her to get around that. She paid for that mistake. She paid for that self-medication until she died. She always had trouble getting a job. She always had people judge her. She always was afraid that somebody was going to go, ah, you're a felon, you're fired. She didn't, under the system didn't give her a second chance. I had to force a second chance. But I began to realize that the system wasn't made for me and her. It wasn't made from a poor kid from the Bronx, an immigrant felon. It wasn't made for us. So I had to change it. I had to do my own thing. I had to go against the system. So I decided I'm going to start making money. And I thought the only way I can make money is to sell stuff. But I realized something else. I didn't know how. I had no idea how to build a business. I had no idea how to go on my own. I had no idea. All I had was a desire, but nothing else. And that didn't go well. My first business, my first sales jobs I hated, but I did, I did good at them. I could sell, I could talk to people. I'm talking to you now, I can talk to people. But I couldn't, didn't have that much success. Good enough, but not great. What I found I had better success at was helping others to sell, that I was good at. My mother went off and started her own business. I helped her out. We built that business up. She had to because she couldn't get a job because she was going to be the felon. We set the business up. I left. I started my own business. That was my MBA. I got my college degree when I was in the Marine Corps, but I got my MBA when my first business did okay. I sold that business off after two years. I guess it was success, maybe. Depends how you, I didn't lose my money. I didn't make any. I went back to selling, married my wife, and then started another business, the one I have now. Now marrying my wife. This in itself is a good story. I met my wife when I was in high school. I was 17, she was 16. I thought she was the greatest thing in the world. She thought I was some guy. Now, I chased her. I thought she was great. I tried to get her out with me. She wouldn't. We were friends, but that was it. I go off to the Marine Corps. She's smart though, so she goes to college. She's a year behind me. 
But I go off to the Marine Corps, I'm sending her gifts, I'm writing her, I'm wooing her, I'm trying to get her to go out with me, and she wouldn't. She finally sends me a letter. Yes, this is like regular snail mail back then. This is the 80s. She sends me a letter, and the letter is, hey, I'm in love with some guy in college. I thought, all right, that's it, it's over. So I figure it's over. We don't communicate in any way for about 11, 12 years. About 11 years later, we have a mutual friend who sends a, an email joke to everybody. It's AOL. Yes, AOL days. I know you. I'm, I'm, I'm not 20. So it's, a, it's an AOL, right? It sends an AOL joke out, and my email address is on it. She sends uh, an email to me. Hey, is this Larry from high school? And I respond, yes. When are we going out? A week later, we go out. A week later, we're married. So that's how I got my wife. The longest sales process I've ever had, and the best one. We've been together now 14 years, and we have uh, two daughters, uh, 12 and 6. My business now. My business now took off very fast. I learned my lessons. I knew how to do, I knew how to run a business. I knew how to sell. I knew how to, how to do a customer service. I knew how to move a business forward. It took off. I was training and coaching in sales, in marketing, in business growth, small business. Life was good. In New York City on Park Avenue, got a nice uh, place on Third Avenue, my own, my own training facility. My own training facility, employees, big banks as customers, and here comes the crash. I was not ready for the crash, and I was devastated. Shut my business down, got rid of my employees, had to reboot. At the same time that happened, when the crash hit, I didn't believe it could be that bad because I'm an optimist. So I thought, how long could this last? A couple of months? It'll be fine, who cares? I'll get past this. Yeah, that wasn't the answer. Year later, I'm devastated. But on top of that, my wife has, my wife's pregnant at the time. We have our, our second child. We have our second child, and my second child, <clears throat> we have our second child, and my second child almost dies. She has open heart surgery at 19 days old. <clears throat> I thought I would lose her. On top of that, I was losing my business. On top of that, my mother was diagnosed with terminal cancer, lung cancer, after smoking for over 40 years. So all these three things happened at the same time. And somehow I had to still make money, keep my family together, not lose my wife, not lose my business, not lose my daughter. And somehow take care of my older daughter, who at the time was six. My wife had moved into the hospital. She literally moved, as any mother would, with a, a sick child to move right into the hospital. All of a sudden, I'm on my own. I'm a single dad overnight. Somehow, I came back from that to rebuild my business, to reboot, to change what I did, to use my relationships, and to build this back up into a business where now I can actually take off. So here we are about a month from the election and things are changing. Dynamic change. Larry Sharp turning things back to where they belong in the hands of the people. I want you to be as conservative or as liberal as you want to be. People tease me and say, Larry, you're from Queens. How do you know, you know what's right for upstate? I don't. That's the point. And guess what? You don't know what's right for me in Queens either. We're even. How I'd about I that. let you be you? You let me be me, and we can all be free together. What a concept. It can work. What? It can work. My first guest this evening, Libertarian candidate Larry Sharp. He's the only candidate offering change that would actually improve the state of New York rather than business as usual. My next guest, Larry Sharp, is a Libertarian candidate for governor of New York. The ideas that Larry has are absolutely brilliant. And they would work in any state, not just New York. Joining me today is the libertarian candidate for governor from the great state of New York, Larry Sharp. Welcome to the Rubin Report. I'm really tired of how stagnant the duopoly political party system has been going, and I'm ready for progress and innovation in this state. I'm the only guy with any shot to win this election besides his majesty. He is the anti-establishment person we need to unravel this mess that is New York State. Larry Sharp, ladies I and gentlemen. Here. I am here. Uh, you yes. are running as an independent. No, don't insult me. I'm oh. a libertarian. You make sense. And personal freedom, uh, accountability of government, and Larry Sharp has our best interests in mind. I like you. 
Oh, that's good. I like you a lot. I I'm like winning what you're already. saying, man. I'm, I'm just telling you right now, up front, I've been listening to a lot of your interviews, watching a lot of your interviews. Mm -hmm. He always takes the time to listen to people because he cares. He is the only candidate with real solutions instead of empty promises. I believe in second chances for myself, for my mother, for my daughters, for you, for everyone. We are a nation of second chances. The system was against me at every step of the way. The system was against my mother at every step of the way. For most of us, the system is against us too. You gotta change that. No more. You gotta make it so that everybody has a second chance. And the only party that even has any idea about that is Libertarian. Larry Sharp, ladies and gentlemen, the revolution has just begun.